What's going on guys? Been getting some questions lately about breeding with these African cichlids. Um, one thing to understand is um, this is no different than um, breeding with other animals and pets uh, as far as people who may be into dog breeding and things of that nature. You want to pick your best standout males to be great contenders with females and sometimes I've seen people breed they'll keep taking the males with the best color you know they may start out with a more dull male and out of that batch you may get a male who's just outstanding very small bright color then they'll breed with him and so forth and so on um, and uh I mean, simply with African cichlids, peacocks in general, it's simple. Keep your water clean. Um, several females to one or two males in a tank. And it will work itself out. <laughs> now, when I get to discussing breeding with uh, my wild caught frontosa, that'll be another story, especially wild caught fish in general. Um, can be a little bit more difficult to breed in captivity. But, um,. Yeah, essentially, um, I like to pick a smaller tank, maybe a 40 gallon breeder. Um, I have a 20 gallon long here with some females and a male in it. And um, just give them time, clean water and time. Good food, clean water and time. And patience, I mean, um, if you're starting out with new females, um, they may spit the eggs out. They may not do it properly. I mean, this happens. Um, I know a lot of people like to grab the eggs um, as soon as they figure out they're fertilized and things of that nature. And some may even say, hey, how do you know they're fertilized? Well, uh, you know, a lot of times it'll depend on how long the female holds them. And um, all I can say is from experience, you'll just start to know. Um, also, after a female holds eggs for so long, her mouth will get bigger and bigger because the fry will start to grow. Um, so these are just a couple quick important things to know when breeding African cichlids. Um, just stay away from, um, you know, um, deformed fish and things of that nature. Um, you want your offspring to be um, as vibrant and high quality as possible. So when you have a tank full of males like this tank, um, for example, you'll get to know your standout males and um, you'll get to know which males you want to breed and which males have the best color and you know a lot of times it may be the most dominant fish in your tank that's just the way it goes that's nature nature sorts itself out in due time um, so any other breeding questions be sure to uh, get down in the comment box and um, let me know uh you'll also see males start to do a little mexican standoff so to speak where they'll uh start to circle each other so forth and so on and some people will say those are those look like two guy fish how are they trying to breed it's it's a it's a dance of dominance and uh eventually you know one will overtake the other and show each other who's who and you know it'll become a process of elimination if it gets too bad where some of the males are actually hurting each other and you see more than a little shredded fins you have to separate those males that's why it's always important to have an extra backup tank um, backup aquariums are so important and if you have a lack of space um, you know just go smaller you know something is better than nothing that's that's really all I can say um, but we'll check out the fish here a little bit and um, yeah breeding if that's what you want to do um, pick pick the best color males that you have if not buy a male with the best color and um, you know let the rest sort itself out long as you're up on your maintenance um, feeding good quality food and um, decor is another thing don't overdo it keep it simple and if you have fish who uh, move the sand around, so to speak, you're gonna see a lot of that when they go to breed with females. 
Um, the worst thing you can do sometimes is reset that and, and, and mess it up. You might mess the groove of things up. So if, a, if you have a fish, a male fish in there with a female, and he gets to redecorating your tank, um, don't be like me when I was a beginner and, you know, many years ago and couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what the heck is he doing? Let me straighten my sand back up. Why does he keep moving my sand? He's trying to make a safe place for the female and say, hey, look, come over to my place. Wink, wink. You know what I mean? So um, let them do their thing. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't over decorate. Um, yeah, keep it simple. That's the best thing you can do. And yeah. Uh, yeah, let's 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 check these guys out and we'll check out how my Thailand OBs are doing. So even in this tank, if I was looking to breed right away, that would be my guy right there. We'll wait till he swims back. This would be the man right here. Um, he pretty much runs the tank. He's the most dominant and vibrant. And uh, you know, just great genes. So uh, you know, it's not hard to tell which which breeder is going to be your stunner male otherwise these guys are doing fine uh, we still got the Madoka white lips in there growing up as I told y'all the largest one ends up pretty much being the alpha male the Madoka white lips because um, the male and female are the same as far as looks go except for a few small things. Um, that little guy looks like he may have some fin shreddage there. You know what happens. But um, yeah, I still got my um, OB Lawanda male over there. Yeah, they're all doing good guys. Um, you know? Breeding is something that just happens if you have females in the tank with males when it comes to these peacocks. When you start getting into wild card breeding, uh, that's when it may get a little bit more complicated. But I appreciate you guys' time. Uh, until next time, Frontosa for life. Short and sweet one this time.